Good evening and welcome. I am holding in my hand a copy of the 422 page report submitted by Amicus Curie Gopal Subramaniam to the Supreme Court. A damning indictment of the authorities, the temple authorities at the Padmanabha Swami temple in Kerala. Remember, this is one of the oldest and perhaps the richest temples in the country, if not in the world. At this time, gold silver and unaccounted wealth inside the temple has not been accounted for. Let me read some of the main parts of this amicus curiae report that has been submitted to the Supreme Court. Unmarked gold found inside the temple. Amicus curiae Gopal Subramaniam says there are at least two plumes with golden handles and embedded gems but there was access number given to these so even if they were inventorized which in most cases they weren't as has been found in this report that i hold in my hand clearly there were no accession numbers that is point number one let me move on to some more excerpts from this report inside the vaults the secret vaults that we are talking about inside the temple there were some tra trunks which had gold silver and unaccounted wealth and these trunks had not been sealed remember gopal subramaniam as he presented this report in the supreme court very clearly came out and said that he was suspicious at several levels that there was pilferage happening stealing happening inside he has asked the court to make sure that the temple authorities and their families have absolutely no access to the wealth inside the temple he also goes on to say there was aggravated suspicion at the fact that there was an act of sealing a trunk and then pretending when the amicus curiae asked the authorities to actually open the trunk they said that we don't have the keys to it Remember this report point by point, this 422 page report point by point dismisses all that has been said by the temple authorities all along. From the first fact that absolutely nothing has been touched inside the temple, to which the amicus curiae has found out that there were cut gold bars inside. There was a reluctance by the temple authorities to help him as he moved from one bolt to the other. There was a gold plating machine inside the temple authorities, raising a question as to why one was required inside. There were gold specks found al along with sand, which led the amicus curiae to come to the conclusion that perhaps there was gold being fielded out. In fact, he spoke to one of the jewelers and he very clearly said that close to 18 kgs of gold could have been shifted out of the temple. And today that jeweler is going back on the statement made to the amicus curiae. Rohini is joining us and so is Atar Khan. Rohini, coming to you first. The temple authorities seem to suggest that the report given by the amicus curiae is based more on what others have said rather than his own findings. Clearly, this is not a very strong uh, front that has been put by the temple authorities who might th find themselves cornered at such a point. Absolutely, and this report also has lots of revelations which have not been seen, but the initial committee that was put together to put across and put down the details of the uh, different possessions of the temple, be it the gold and silver and other jewelry and ornaments that have been put together, the inquiry committee that was set up, set up earlier. Interestingly, it's just not on the versions of different people that this whole report has been filed. Also, you can see that the, um, uh, he has very clearly said, uh, Mr. Uh, Gopal Subramanian has said, that he has entered the various walls and he has charged upon seeing a lot of things which were not part of the list earlier very explosive details as to how he has found loads and loads of gold coins, silver, jewellery of different kinds which have not been accounted for. Very clearly he says in his report that it indicates the fact that the donations that have been made in, in kind especially in gold, silver and other jewellery have clearly not been accounted for which gives suspicion to the fact that there has been pilferage and also that a lot of money has been account unaccounted for. Not just that, they are also talking about land dealings of the temple for that matter. They have said very clearly, uh, he has said that he has observed and from other statements that he has taken that certain parts of the land of the temple has been given because of, of 
favors that a particular political party has done to the temple. And we have seen many such kind of other instances mentioned in the detailed report, more than 500 pages, where he has talked about not just about the fact about the walls that are there, and the walls have been a, a point of discussion, and people have been curious to know what is there. But he's also talked about how they've also found, let me, let me cite an example of a gold bar that looked recently cut. And so he's saying that possible that they could have been such kind of uh, pilferage of gold and other th other articles uh, in the end and lots okay. and lots of um, material mo must have been moved out of the temple. Uh, well, one, let me just make one last point. We're also talking about how attacks have taken place of people who could, could, could possibly have... Uh, Rohini, I'll alarm come to you in just the, a bit, but former CAG Vinod Rai, who has been ordered by the court to look into the audit hmm. after the finding of the amicus curiae, is joining us on the phone line. Mr. Rai, are you aware of the contents of this amicus curiae report that has been submitted to the Supreme Court? Uh, no, the uh, uh, final copy of the report has not been made available to me. I am expecting to see it once the orders of the court are made available to me. Uh, Mr. Rai, do you foresee any challenges considering the kind of opposition that is already coming to the report and its findings? Well, I don't see any challenges. This is a kind of an audit which is very different from the conventional audit that we do. So I'm quite confident that once I put my team together, we will be able to face up to the challenge, whatever the challenges that come across. Mr. Rai, you mentioned that you're going to put your team together. Considering that the artifacts inside are extremely old and antique, what kind of team do you plan to put together to go with this audit? See, I have not decided on the kind of team as yet, but obviously there will be auditors and there will be some people who are uh, associated with temples and the kind of artifacts that are available in the temple. I, <clears throat> once the Supreme Court order is made available to me, I will go to Trivandrum and then make the necessary enquiries and then decide on how which are the people who would constitute the team. Mr. Rai, when will you be given a copy of this Amicus Curie report and will you be uh, going through it before you start your audit? I will obviously be going through the report much before I start the audit and I'm expecting to have the report by, by, by earliest next week, early next week. By the scathing indictment that has been made by the amicus curiae, do you think action should have been taken before and perhaps this audit should have come much, much earlier? No, I don't want to make any uh, comments upon because I haven't seen the, you're talking about an indictment, but I haven't seen the reports. So I really don't know what the contents of the report and uh, without knowing the contents of the report, I really don't want to make any comment. Mr. Rai, have you been given a certain time frame by the court to finish this audit? Uh, well, from the newspaper reports, I don't see a time frame. I haven't seen the copy of the order as yet. Uh, finally, uh, uh, Mr. Rai, one final question. Uh, do you get to choose the team personally that is going to do the audit or will some other agency also be assisting you? Oh, I mean, as per the court audit, I uh, court verdict, I find that uh, I have the freedom to choose the team. Uh, do you see, I'm going to ask you this one last time, do you see this as an extremely tough assignment considering the religious sensitivities involved as well and the royal family of Travancore saying that they're going to put a stop to this audit? No, see, this is, I don't, uh, well, I'm not aware that the royal family has said that they put a stop to the audit. But yes, as I mentioned earlier, this is not a conventional audit of the kind that we have been doing in the past. But then, of course, every assignment is a challenge. And I'm sure that uh, in case uh, we start the assignment, we start the audit, uh, we'll be up to the challenges. Uh, one last question, Mr. Rai. As far as this temple is concerned, there have been a whole lot of stories about superstitions around it and whoever has gone inside the vaults uh, has uh, seemed to have had some b bad luck befall that person. Uh, do you at any point see that coming in the way of how you're going to go about this audit? Obviously, you will have to go inside the temple. Uh, have you heard of these superstitions? Look, I have been to the temple and I've been there many times. I'm not aware of the superstitions. In any case, I don't believe in superstitions, so I don't think I need to take cogn cognizance of all that. Mr. Vinod Rai, former CAG, who is going to be auditing uh, the Padmana, uh, Padmanabha Swami Temple in Kerala, speaking to us exclusively here on Headlines today. He is going to form his own team. He will be making sure that he looks at uh, each and every element that he has been ordered by the Supreme Court. He sees that, yes, this is going to be a different kind of audit. We will uh, play that uh, 
uh, phone uh, for you in just a bit, that phone conversation that we had with Mr. Vinod Rai. Atar Khan is also joining us outside the Supreme Court. Atar, we were just speaking to Mr. Vinod Rai and he says that yes, this audit is going to be a different one. He didn't go to the extent of saying that it is going to be a tough assignment, but he said it's going to be very different from something that he's done in the past. He still not read the report, but the Supreme Court seemed extremely disturbed by the contents that were put forth by the amicus curiae. Well, indeed, yes, uh, we know that uh, that is why uh, the Supreme Court has chosen a person of stature of uh, Mr. Vinod Rai to carry out this entire exercise. Uh, uh, clearly, the court was miffed uh, by the state of affairs there, and it had been monitoring uh, this. Uh, uh, it was a SLP, uh, uh, the petition which came to Supreme Court uh, through the royal family. It had been hearing it, and now this interim order, you see, but is going to go a long way in bringing about transparency and is going to remove the trust deficit, uh, which is there, uh, uh, you know, in the administration of affairs. We know that the Supreme Court has already ordered uh, that the administration would be taken over by Chief Judicial uh, Magistrate of uh, Thirunandapuram, uh, who will be in charge of the administration. He would also be in charge of ensuring that whenever the offerings are opened, uh, they are uh, accounted for and the, uh, the person's presence is required there. Moreover, uh, he will be assisted by four other members. So these are the measures which have been implemented. Of course, uh, Gopal Subramaniam's, uh, uh, you know, the, be, has played a very, very crucial role as amicus curiae, and his uh, report will be the roadmap for bringing about more transparency and improvement of the administration at the temple. Okay, Atish, stay on with us. Rohini, let me come back to you. Politics has always been played over this issue. The left has always been suggesting that uh, the entire temple uh, structure should be put under the state government and they should handle, uh, of course, this being a huge treasure chest. And on the other hand, the Congress has been silent, keeping in view the religious sentiments. Following what Gopal Subramaniam has said in his report, that politics has come to the fore all over again, has it, has it not, in Kerala? Absolutely, and we've seen how each of the political parties, as you mentioned, have been taking a stand on this. But yes, uh, we've seen how the amicus curiae, as well as all those who are involved, even Mr. Minor Dry has been specifically saying, there are a lot of religious sentiments that are associated with it, and that is why it has to be taken care of when this whole issue is being handled. And Rohini, that is why just stay with me because Rahul Ishwar is joining us on the phone line. Rahul Ishwar, my first question to you is, what are your objections to the amicus curiae report that has been submitted uh, by Gopal Subramaniam? We had a very detailed discussion with almost 50 organizations on this. We respect Amicus Curie being a senior solicitor general, but there are a lot of exaggerations and hearsay in this report. So there are some parts of this report. Which Why do you say that the report is exaggerated? It has been submitted because before the highest court. It has every fact, and I've gone through the report myself, every fact substantiated by people on the ground by the Amicus Curie himself. No, it is it's just the other way around. He has taken allegations and uh, opinions of some people and he has simply quoted it. And one important point we should all observe is, in the Supreme Court interim verdict, not even one of these observations was echoed. Supreme Court didn't per se take all the observations he made and put it in the verdict. Mr. Ishwar, as far as the Supreme Court is concerned of this country, the Supreme Court has said that what has come in the Amicus Curia report is extremely disturbing. There is going to be an audit done by former CAG Vinod Rai, who just spoke with us. On what basis are you going with the claim that these claims or whatever has been said in the report is exaggerated? Clearly, there is something that is worrying you and the temple authorities. Okay, Ma'am, I have gone through this report extensively. A great percentage of it is very good, very sharp, but there are some hearsay, unnecessarily emotional pitching. If you can go to, there are many unsubstantiated allegations that is simply being made. For example, a huge quantity of gold being taken out only as an allegation. There is no proof, there is no substantiation. He is expressing doubts whether these things have happened. He welcomes me, he will not go uh, in all the members, we all trust him as a person, we trust the Supreme Court, but we can't simply resist but point out many of the contradictions in the amicus curiae report. Rahul Ishwar, stay on the phone, uh, phone line with us and you would like to hear what the next person we have on the phone line has to say. M.A. Baby is also joining us. Mr. Baby, Rahul Ishwar says that as far as this report by the amicus curiae th that has been submitted to the highest court of the country is concerned, it is just exaggerated. You see... Uh... I generally uh, appreciate the report 
submitted by amicus curiae the reputation of gobal subramanyam is uh, known to those who are following the way he used to argue cases the deep study that he undertakes now the amicus curiae report has been accepted by the supreme court also do you think it now, is exaggerated I, i don't i don't i don't have any evidence to believe that it is exaggerated why and, do you think uh, the temple so, authorities are so averse to this report uh, anyway supreme court has accepted the amicus curiae report and uh, others do have their democratic rights to state that it is exaggerated but i feel that it is a, a report on the basis of the study he has undertaken I know Mr. N.G. Sashi Bhushan, a renowned uh, scholar and writer and expert in many matters related to Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple. He was there with the Amicus Curie along with other experts to assist the Amicus Curie. Anyway, I don't want to go into the merit of the Amicus Curie report, which has already been accepted by the Supreme Court. And even Mr. Heeshore says that there is some exaggeration. even if we give benefit of doubt to his argument uh, but i do not think is the cpm not playing politics over this issue all over again when it is it was your own government you did not have the political will to go through with changes and bring the temple authorities and the funds that are collected under the state now you're blaming the congress party over it isn't it the same case of you playing politics now not at all not at all we we were very very you know reserved in our comments we were saying that uh, there are indications to believe that there were some wrong doings uh, first of all we know that when the high court demanded an inventory of the the assets the material the valuables uh, which are in the custody of the temple authority first of all the temple authority is uh, uh, did not cooperate with the high court that road when high court insisted they submitted a list of inventory which was totally you know with full of discrepancy the page numbers many pages were missing. okay i have in my hand a copy of uh, the report submitted by amicus curiae gopal subramaniam to the supreme court to which the highest court of the country has said that it is extremely disturbing this is a report on the padmanabha swami temple in kerala which is considered to be the richest in the country and where he's come out with a damning indictment former caag vinod rai will now be doing the audit of the temple he spoke to us just a short while back and said this one is not going to be a conventional assignment well i don't see any challenges this is a kind of an audit which is very different from the conventional audit that we do so i'm quite confident that once i put my team together we will be able to face up to the challenge whatever the challenges that come across mr rai you mentioned that you're going to put your team together considering that the artifacts inside are extremely old and antique what kind of team do you plan to put together to go with this audit see i have not decided on the kind of team as yet but obviously there will be auditors and there will be some people who are uh, associated with temples and the kind of artifacts that are available in the temple i <clears throat> once the supreme court order is made available to me i will go to trivandrum and then make the necessary enquiries and then decide on how which are the people who would constitute the team Mr Rai when will you be given a copy of the Samicus Curie report and will you be uh, going through it before you start your audit I will obviously be going through the report much before I start the audit and I'm expecting to have the report by 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 earliest next week early next week By the scathing indictment that has been made by the Amicus Curiae do you think action should have been taken before and perhaps this audit should have come much much earlier No I don't want to make any uh, comments upon because I haven't seen the you are talking about an indictment but I haven't seen the reports so I really don't know what the contents of the report and uh, without knowing the contents of the report I really don't want to make any comment Mr Rai have you been given a certain time frame by the court to finish this audit Uh well from the newspaper reports I don't see a time frame I haven't seen the copy of the order as yet 
Uh, finally, uh, Mr. Rai, one final question. Uh, do you get to choose the team personally that is going to do the audit or will some other agency also be assisting you? Oh, I mean, as per the court audit, I uh, court verdict, I find that uh, I have the freedom to choose the team. Uh, do you see, I'm going to ask you this one last time, do you see this as an extremely tough assignment considering the religious sensitivities involved as well and the royal family of Travancore saying that they're going to put a stop to this audit? No, see, this is, I don't, uh, well, I'm not aware that the royal family has said that they put a stop to the audit. But yes, as I mentioned earlier, this is not a conventional audit of the kind that we have been doing in the past. But then, of course, every assignment is a challenge. And I'm sure that uh, in case uh, we start the assignment, we start the audit, uh, we'll be up to the challenge. Uh, one last question, Mr. Rai. As far as this temple is concerned, there have been a whole lot of stories about superstitions around it and whoever has gone inside the vaults uh, has uh, seemed to have had some b bad luck befall that person. Uh, do you at any point see that coming in the way of how you're going to go about this audit? Obviously, you will have to go inside the temple. Uh, have you heard of these superstitions? Look, I have been to the temple and I've been there many times. I'm not aware of the superstitions. In any case, I don't believe in superstitions, so I don't think I need to take cognizance of all that. Mr. Vinod Rai, former CAG, who is going to be auditing uh, the Padmana. And Rahul Ishwar is still on the phone line with us. Uh, Mr. Ishwar, I just want to point out a couple of things that you said. First of all, as far as uh, the amicus curiae was concerned, he made uh, that uh, certain claim in the, uh, in the report about uh, the fact that um, there is several wealth unaccounted for by what the auditor of the temple had told him, number one. Secondly, he went into several vaults and saw that there was money scattered all over, that there were foreign currency notes mutilated. Are you going to call that exaggerated as well? As the amicus curiae, he has to report what he sees. And he saw money being splattered all over. There were huge heaps of coins with nobody looking after them. Ma'am, there is not even one rupee there. It's these are historical coins. The so-called foreign money you exchange is a Roman coin 2,000 years back. So clearly all you're suggesting that, the, you're suggesting that Gopal Subramaniam is lying. No, no, Gobal Subramaniam clearly stated this. It is because of the lack of pressure for words. We misunderstand. And look at the approach of CAG Vinod Rai. We totally welcome it. And there is only one belief regarding this temple. Whoever comes to this temple... Let me, let me, read, it. Let me read from the report, Mr. Iswar. Uh, the amicus, amicus curiae submitted. He actually went into the room by accident. And it was only then he noticed that there were huge heaps of coins on the floor. The amicus curiae also noticed that there was a register that had been sealed. A collection of coins, currencies were found in the room, both on the table as display as well as in floors on, uh, on the floor in uh, bags. Some of the coins had been counted, while many currencies were in a mutilated form. This is a court document, Mr. Iswar. Which you are contesting. That is, not, that is not regarding the inner vault of the temple. That is only regarding the rooms in the temple premises. Inside the walls, there is gold, there is diamond, there is silver, there is Even that part, the I'm completely running out of time, Rahul Iswar. But we will come back to you and ask you that question as well. Because every fact has been documented in this report. This is the headlines today exclusive.